the Lord. Again, again. Great is the Lord, God Almighty. Great is the Lord on high. The train of his robe. The train of his robe fills the temple. It's a declaration. It says mountains are still being moved. It says mountains are still being moved. Strongholds are still being loosed. And we believe it because I saw it. And God, you are moving again. And you are a God of miracles. And it is wonders that you are doing. Oh, Lord, I declare it over my generation because you're on the move and there's nothing you cannot do. Thank you, Jesus. They're still being loosed. Oh, God, we believe it. 
worthy, yes, I can see it. Oh, wonders are still what you do. Mountains, oh, mountains are still being moved. Amen. Strongholds are still being moved. Oh, God, we believe, yes, we can see it. Wonders are still what you do. Yes, Lord, and bodies. Bodies are still being raised. Giants are still being slain. Oh God, I believe it. Yes, we can see it. The wonders are still what you do. And bodies. Bodies are still being raised. Giants are still being slain. giant in your life whatever stronghold in your life he can move it he can slay it and he can loose it if you don't believe it for yourself god can do it declare it bodies are still being Welcome in this place. Are welcome in this place. Oh, you're welcome in our hearts. Oh, come and have your way. Oh, Lord. Oh, God, meet us face to face. Oh, all consuming fire. Oh, move without restraint. You are welcome. You are welcome in this place. Welcome in the hearts. Come and have your way. Yes, Jesus. Oh, Lord. God, oh, meet us face to face. Oh, all consuming fire, oh, move without restraint. Again, oh, Lord, you are welcome in this place. Oh, you, you are welcome in this place. Welcome in our hearts. Oh, Lord, come and have your way. Come and have your way, Lord. Oh, God, please meet us face. All-consuming fire, oh, move without restraint, and breathe on us. Breathe on us, Spirit God, oh, become, Lord, this nation's heart's desire, Lord. Breathe on us, oh, Lord. Breathe on these dry bones, oh, God, and become the desire of our hearts, oh, Lord.
Lord, yes, Lord. We are, we are hungry for you, Lord. Señor, tenemos hambre de ti. Lord, we are hungry for you. Tenemos hambre de ti. We are hungry for you, Lord. Señor, aquí hay un pozo de agua viva. There is a well here full of living waters. Que los filisteos han querido tapar. That the Philistines tried to fill it up and cover up. Señor, pero tú estás trayendo nuevamente aguas de vida. But you are bringing once again living waters. No solo a este lugar, not only to this place, sino a cada corazón. But to each heart. Cada cada cosa que los filisteos han querido venir. Everything that the Philistines has come to take. A mentir. To lie. A mentir, a robar, a destruir. To steal and destroy. Tú estás trayendo nuevamente. You are once again bringing living waters. Señor, pero aquel que cree y tiene sed la recibirá. But who he who believes and is thirsty will receive. Estás trayendo nuevamente aguas de vida. Because you're bringing once again living waters. Estás destapando los pozos de avivamiento, Señor. You are uncovering the wells of revival over this land. Sí, Señor, lo creemos. Yes, Lord. Lo testificamos, Señor. We see it and we testify. Señor, que estás viniendo no solamente a rescatar a la nueva generación. We testify that not only are you coming for the new generation. No solamente a resucitar a la nueva generación. Not only to revive the new generation. Señor, a los grandes, Señor. But also for the older ones. Porque hemos visto que en la tierra hay hambre y sed. Because we have seen that there is hunger and thirst. Hambre de los genuinos de Dios. Hunger from those that are genuine of God. Hambre de aquello que cambia el corazón, que transforma el alma, Señor. Hunger of the things that transform and changes the heart. Señor, y me paro acá en este pozo de agua viva. And Lord, I stand up right here on this well of living sí, water. Señor, tengo hambre y sed de lo nuevo. Yes, Lord, I am hungry and thirsty of the new. Tengo hambre y sed. I am hungry and thirsty of the waters that you are bringing. And I will not be to the side. But I will come and I will drink of those waters. I will not let the enemy speak to my mind. I will not let the enemy come and tell me the contrary. Because it is your spirit that is calling us, Lord. Porque tu espíritu nos está llamando de nuevo. Because it is your spirit that is calling them again. Oh, Señor, tenemos hambre y sed de justicia. Lord, we are hungry and thirsty for your justice. Queremos recibir lo nuevo. Ayúdanos, Señor. Lord, we want to receive the new. Help us, Lord. Señor, ven, ven, ven. Espíritu de Dios a cada corazón. Spirit of God, come to each heart. Todos los planes del enemigo, Señor. The plans of the enemy, Lord. Señor, por el poder de tu Espíritu Santo. By the power of your Holy Spirit. Todos los planes del enemigo para nuestros hijos, nuestra familia. All the plans from the enemy for our children, for our families. Tu Espíritu Santo, Señor, los saca a un lado. Your Holy Spirit, Lord, will put them aside. Amen, amen. Recibimos, Señor, tu agua. Without getting too controversial, uh, we're going to look at the English language prefix trans. And because trans is a prefix or the beginning of a word, it uh, helps in forming many words with different meanings. And here are some common words that begin with trans. And again, my apologies uh, if this part of the message doesn't translate well into Spanish. So our first word is translate, quite appropriate. 
which means to express in another language. Another word, transport. The moving of goods or people from one place to another. Transparent, admitting light so that objects beyond can be seen, like a window. Transfer, to pass from one place, one person or thing, to another. Transfiguration. A marked change in former appearances happened with Jesus on the mount. Transistor. It's a small electronic device that uh, controls, regulates the flow of an electric current. The last one, transform. To alter or be altered radically in form and function. Today, I want to focus on the last word, transform. There are two Greek words for transform. The first one is metaschematizo, metaschematizo, which means specifically to disguise. This is an interesting word. You might notice that in the middle is the word schema, metaschematizo. So, uh, which may bring to mind the scripture of Ephesians 6.11 that says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes or the strategies of the devil. Metaschematizo, to come in disguise. <clears throat> Which means that in Satan's dealings with us, he may come definitely disguised. Corinthians 11.14 says that he comes as or disguised as an angel of light. Speaking things that might sound right, but have twisted meanings, and so open us up to error. The second Greek word is metamorphos, a little bit more familiar to us. To change. There are two varieties of, I'm sorry, which means a change of physical form, structure, or substance. And it's this meaning we will talk about today, to change, not the disguise, but to change. There are two varieties of change, either voluntary or involuntary. And voluntary means the change occurs by our choice or efforts. Involuntary means it happens without our participation. Perhaps the best known illustration of uh, an involuntary Terry transformation is the change of a caterpillar into a butterfly. Now this would be a change in form and structure. The caterpillar's only job is to crawl on leaves and eat and eat and eat. Once the caterpillar's finished eating, it goes into a cocoon. And then, after time, out of the cocoon comes this beautiful butterfly. As adults, <clears throat> uh, butterflies in general do not eat. They are simply a mature caterpillar. They don't need to eat. Their specific job is simply to mate and lay eggs to bring about the next generation. Now, let us look at a, that was vol involuntary process, the changing from caterpillar to butterfly, let's look at a voluntary process of transformation, a very specific one that God feels is important enough for him to mention in Scripture. This will not be a change in form or structure like the caterpillar, but it will be a change in substance. Substance is what something is made of or something that is contained. For instance, paint is the substance you find in a paint can. And water might be what you find in a drinking glass. A person who pretends to be more mature than he is, we might say, is lacking substance. Now what could so be so important about this word substance that we need instruction from God? 
We can find the answer in Romans 12, 2. This verse says that as we progress in our relationship with God, we are not to remain in the same state we were in as immature believers. It says it this way, and it may be familiar to you, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now this is not a physical transformation like caterpillar to butterfly. Does not involve giving us a new physical brain. This is to be a change of the inward person, that part of us which is our substance, specifically a change of the mind. You know, it uh, came to me that the ladies just may love this uh, because the ladies just might be thinking, see, even God agrees with us. We've said all along we reserve the right to change our mind. So, anybody buying that? <laughs> I believe that's what they have always said, yes. Well, but it's not quite what God intended, but maybe it's close. So, looking at Romans 12, 2 again, we see that the transformation is accomplished by what the verse calls a renewing. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. If we break down the verse into its phrases, we find it tells us three things. Number one, tells us that we have a problem that must be solved. Number two, tells us what must take place to solve it. And number three, tells us the process by which we arrive at the solution. Let's examine those three points. Number one, what is the problem? The answer, our big problem is that we find it easy to be like the world. Out of which we were called when we became followers of Jesus. As believers, we should not be like the world because the world is an enemy of God. Number two, what needs to happen to correct the problem? Answer, the way to take care of this problem is to be transformed or changed, which is the word of the day we mentioned earlier. Point number three, how is this change going to take place? Answer, the process of transformation is accomplished by the renewing of the mind, which means changing the way we think and what we think about. Let's take a look at that word, renewing, the renewing of the mind. And the meaning just might surprise you. The Greek word for renewing means to renovate. Exactly what you do with a junky house to make it livable. You renovate it. You paint. You get new carpet. You might even replace a stove. But you don't tear the house down and rebuild it. You take the structure and make it fresh and clean. This is what occurs when the mind is renewed. It's not destroyed and replaced. No, it is renovated. Now, it might be reasonable to ask, why, why such focus on the mind? Because from it, from it comes all thought and activity. In thinking a thought, we conceive the seed of an action. In our daily living, we do not do anything unless we have first formed a thought. And once we think a thought, we can choose to act or not to act. To deal with a thought requires purposeful intent. 
So this is a voluntary function. I had mentioned that there were also involuntary functions in our body that happen without thought. A few examples are the beating of the heart, the digesting of food, uh, your kidneys, processing your blood, our immune system going into action when the body is attacked by viruses and bacteria. All our organs and bodily systems work without any thought from us. Now one very important function that requires no thought is breathing, which we can thank God for because we'd all die as soon as we fell asleep if we had to think about breathing. Let me give you an example of a voluntary function of our thoughts. Most likely every single day begins something like this in all its agony. Okay, now, pull back the covers and lift your head from the pillow and sit up and place your feet on the floor. Okay. And after sitting there, tempting to process that next horrible thought and action, which is to stand up, Lo and behold, a new thought comes to us. Ah, just five minutes more. And whoosh, that thought throws our head back down on the pillow. Now, I think that's pretty much the way it happens every day. So you see, not even a single day can get into motion without us thought becoming voluntary action. So let's recap what we've covered so far. We've looked at the word transform, meaning to change. We've seen in the book of Romans that the Bible addresses the idea of our mind undergoing a change. And we have seen that the renewing of our mind requires us to voluntarily be involved. Or in other words, that we are to be involved in that change by choice and personal effort. We must exercise our will and just do it. All right, we're done with change or transformation. We can now examine another word. That word is list. We all know what a list is. In fact, many lists are well known. If I said, I am thinking of a list that has as its first item, George Washington, could you give me the last item on that list? Anybody? Biden. President Joseph Biden. Yes. <clears throat> the current president of the United States so this is a list easily recognized as a list of presidents of this country over the last 200 years or so. And there are all kinds of lists, shopping lists, list of dinner party guests, a list of plants for the garden, a list of every part that makes a car, and a list of what to pack in that car for a vacation. Before the internet and mobile phones, there was the alphabetical listing of a person's name, person's address, and their home phone number. Available for anyone to see. It was a gigantic list called the telephone book, with the white pages for individuals and pages of yellow color for businesses. And in more modern days, Amazon drivers, UPS drivers, etc., they have lists of deliveries that's maintained by technology. So drivers can make deliveries efficiently. You go to your Amazon orders page, and there before you, you find a list of your purchases in chronological order. 
many, many kinds of lists. My wife tells me uh, of her dad, who, uh, when he was angry with someone, uh, used to say, well, they're on my list. <laughs> and I got the idea that was probably a list was not good to be on. So, do we find lists in Scripture? Yes, we do. Genesis. In Genesis, God shared his creation list with us. His six days of work. On Mount Sinai, God gave to Moses a list of ten rules for his people to follow and live by, which later on, the religious leaders of Israel expanded to a list of more than 600 rules. Perhaps they thought, gee, if ten is good, more is better. So let's really impress him. Which never works, because God can't be impressed. Through the prophets, God has made lists of the sins of his people, and not only theirs, but also the sins of nations. Matthew begins his gospel with a list of the descendants of Jesus from Abraham onward, like this. This is the record of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac, Isaac the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers, etc., etc. I won't read the whole thing. After going through 52 generations, the list ends with Eleazar, the father of Matan. Matan, the father of Jacob, and Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. Quite a long and important list of people in the line of Christ. Even Jesus gave a list, just a short two-item list found in Matthew 22. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they themselves gathered together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with a question. Teacher, which commandment is the greatest in the law? Jesus declared, love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. So for him, it was just one, two, and he was done. How simple, uplifting, and to the point, and positive Jesus is when he speaks. Did you notice? He mentioned the mind, all your mind, in loving God. Very fitting for our topic. So you see the Bible does make use of lists. So what does a list have to do with being transformed by the renewing of the mind? Well, let's first preface the answer to this <clears throat> with this observation. To the extent that Jesus was supporting, loving, and positive with the truth, the devil is just as opposing, hateful, and negative. You realize that when we come to church, for us, it's almost like a vacation. To me, it is. I'm retired, but I remember when I was not. Every Monday morning, in the car, and when I used to work at Gwinnett County, I had to drive that 80-mile round trip every day. But that was after service. And out there is not like being in a service. Service, you get refreshed. You get encouraged again. But then you have to go into the arena where it's a fight. And so because Satan will do all he can to bring us things that attack our minds and hearts, things that can lead to destruction, we must counter the attack. 
Before we served God, we served the devil. He was our master, and he won't let us change easily. Therefore, we need some help to escape the effects of the destructive ways of thinking. You may be familiar with uh, Christian author Tim LaHaye, who along with author Jerry Jenkins uh, began writing the Left Behind series back in the 1990s. Those were books about what is called the rapture, or the taking away of the church from the earth before God brings his wrath and judgment. Interestingly, just three days ago, I was on Amazon looking at the listing for the Left Behind series. And my jaw dropped. My eyes bugged out. I didn't tell my wife about it because she can find out now. Let me read to you the Amazon wording at the top of the page for the Left Behind series. It says, Left Behind 25th Anniversary Edition. Experience the book that launched the phenomenon. Volume 1 of the Left Behind series. Now listen. Apocalyptic Christian fiction about the end times. On the Amazon page for this book. Fiction to describe the contents of this book? Possibly or most probably it was Amazon who inserted the word fiction. I can't imagine the authors doing that. I mention this as an example of what is in the mind of the world. A mind that is an enemy of God. It's a great example of how necessary it is to not be conformed to the world, but to have a transformed and renovated mind. Well, this same author, Tim LaHaye, wrote a book about 15 years earlier in 1980. It was titled, You Are Engaged in a Battle for the Mind, A Subtle Warfare. How appropriate a title because the cosmic battle is for the mind. Always has been, which has consequences for the heart. The mind is the resource center that feeds the content of our actions. Remember, in the mind, we form a thought, and then the, from that thought, we make decisions. My getting out of bed example showed you that we can decide to get out of bed, or we can decide to go back to sleep for five minutes. And more likely, it's going to be 15 minutes instead of five. It's just the way we work. Either way, though, out of bed or back to sleep, we had to make a decision. And that's how it always is and will be for everything. Way back in the beginning in Genesis, a man named Cain had a heart and mind struggle. His mind was engaged in something extremely negative and destructive. He was thinking about killing his brother, Abel. God's word to him was, sin is at the door. You must master it. And we find ourselves in the same kind of struggle. Maybe not about killing, but certainly other things. Remember, think a thought, and you have the seed of an action. So, to reverse course and head in the right direction, we need a way to shake off the old ways of thinking. We need to figure out how to get unconformed to the world. John 1.12 tells us we are given the right and the power to become sons of God. And the right there, you might say, whoa, whoa. I thought when I accepted Christ as my Savior and his work on the cross that I became a son of God. Well, yes. You entered into a new world. 
a new relationship, forgiven of sin, no longer under God's condemnation. But that is just the entry point. Just the entry point. It's the beginning. Now you have what is necessary to go from leaf-eating caterpillar to butterfly. You have the right and the power. The word for power is exousia. And its flavor of meaning is this. Exercising the delegated right authority and mastery of control over our development. God is saying, through my son Jesus, the first part of the work was done. Now it's your turn. Ordinarily, that would be a very scary position to be in, I think. But he doesn't leave us alone in this. We have the help of the Helper. The Holy Spirit, whose job is to continually counsel us, teach us, lead us to that which feeds our minds and hearts with good things. And since we are told not to quench the Spirit, God and it is our responsibility, just like it was Cain's, to honor good counsel by listening to the Spirit of God and by keeping our minds healthy and by feeding on the things that He wants us to feed on. In your journey going forward, for the sake of your own soul, take in nothing shady, nothing immoral, nothing unwholesome, Nothing impure, nor that which is on the edge of, nor has even the appearance of impurity. Even the world has a saying, you are what you eat, meaning the cells of your body take on the characteristics of what you put into your body. It's the same approach with our minds. Feed on garbage you get trashed. By feeding on the truth and thinking on good things, our minds become transformed from unhealthy to healthy in the Lord. So as you journey along your path, filter out the garbage. So if we are what we eat, what do you suppose is the best diet to gain healthy minds? Well, just so happens we have a list for that. And with this I finish. I was waiting until I could say that. <laughs> Our dear beloved brother Paul has a recommendation found in Philippians 4, verse 8. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, Whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. This is Paul's seven-day-a-week list of highly recommended dishes for the mind. Did you notice the word whatever occurring six times? Potentially that word can mean unlimited number, whatever. Where do you start? Where do you stop with a word like whatever? So to really grasp the grand scope of meaning of this verse, I want to substitute for the word whatever this phrase. There is a list of things that are dot, 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 dot. Okay? So instead of saying whatever is true, whatever is honorable, we will say this. There is a list of things that are true. There's a list of things that are honorable. 
There is a list of things that are just. There is a list of things that are pure. There's a list of things that are lovely. And there is a list of things that are commendable. These are what you should think about. Paul is saying, there are many of these good things to be found if you just look in the right places. So please consult my list. How simply and clearly Paul shares his list with us in his letter to the Philippians. You know, this was Paul's 10th letter to the churches. Much time had passed since his conversion. How he must have had to change his ways of thinking before his conversion, just like Cain, Paul was a murderer of God's people, the fledgling church, because he was so zealous for the God that he was taught. He was committed with all his heart, all his being, to the ways of the Jewish forefathers and the scriptures. Blameless, really, in that system. As he said of himself, he was a Hebrew of Hebrews at the top of his class. And then Jesus came calling and everything changed. Do you know where Paul was when he wrote to the Philippians about a transformed mind in Rome, far from his homeland? Several decades after his call and conversion, he was in Rome not by chance, but by the will of God, as it states in Acts chapter 23, verse 11. The following night, the Lord stood by him and said, Take courage, for as you have testified to the facts about me in Jerusalem, so you must testify also in Rome. In love and in faithfulness, to a trusted servant, God informed Paul of upcoming days and what he must do. However, apart from this, God also had a very special project in mind. He engineered it so that Paul should have plenty of time to write letters to the churches he had so faithfully visited nurtured in person in his travels through the Gentile cities. As a result of his imprisonment, the letters he wrote to those churches became most of the New Testament, which we now have in our possession. So, here in Rome, where he was held prisoner, facing what would be the end of his earthly life by beheading, Paul finds strength by encouraging himself, by taking control of his mind and directing it to think not on his present situation, but on those good and uplifting things that renew and transform the mind. Undoubtedly, Paul fixed his mind on the Lord Jesus Christ himself, who being the fulfillment of all those good things, was at the top of that list. Paul counsels us in 1 Corinthians 11.1, 1, be imitators of me just as I am also of Christ. If we find our maturity stunted, if we find our attention arrested by what this world offers, it's only because of our neglect that it is so. Jesus did his part, now it's our turn. So, be diligent in renovation, and you'll find your mind transformed in obedience to the loving counsel of God. So, as you go out tomorrow, just remember, you have work to do from now until he returns. Because he has said, I have given you the power 
to do this. The only way he's going to help you is to remind you. He does not perform the changes. Only in response to us does the work get accomplished. You have the power. You have the right to exercise that power. You have the right to tell your former master, no. My mind is going to be thinking on the things of God. There is plenty I can think about, and I'll filter out the garbage that keeps trying to crowd in. This is very important. Necess it's a necessity. If you do not do it, you'll find yourself always saying, I don't know why I feel so beaten down. I don't know why I feel disconnected from God. So renew your mind. Think on the things that are good. It'll happen. Just like the caterpillar turning into butterfly. So let's pray. Lord, thank you for your miracles. The true miracle, Lord, is that a heart can be changed. The true miracle, Lord, is the transforming within from what we used to be to what you want us to be. We accept that challenge, Lord. We accept that responsibility. Thank you for reminding us. We forget once in a while. The job is difficult. It's not easy. But Lord, you gave us what we need to do that work. You've equipped us for the task. As we're changing Working on our minds, you've given us armor to protect ourselves while we're going through this work. Thank you for what you've provided. And yet you don't dress us in this armor. We must put it on. You've just offered to us to come and share as kings and those who will reign with you one day. You've said that if we are faithful in just a little bit, you'll give us much to reign over. Thank you. What a wonderful prospect. Lord, we want to come before you when you return and call us to yourself and you judge our works by fire, whether they be gold and silver or wood, hay and stubble. We want to be found, Lord, rich. We want to see most of what we've done remain not be burned up so lord help us help us help us to be bold help us to believe your word that you have given us all authority in heaven and in earth so appoint us lord where you want us to be we will go we are frightened at times, but we will go. <laughs> what other choice would we want to make? As Peter said, Lord, you have the word of life. Every word is life. So I commit us all to you, Lord. Cover us, protect us. Above all, keep that spirit of rejoicing like that well of water bubbling up from within. You said we would have water flowing from within. There is a well within each one of us, and we are going to draw from it. Thank you. Oh, we bless you for how you work. We bless you for what you are doing, Lord, these testimonies from these young people of the things they have seen. Lord, they have seen hearts change. They have seen hearts humbled. They have seen hearts repent. They have seen hearts be reconciled. Oh, this is your work, Lord. 
We are glad that we are seeing it. Thank you.